Okay, so this is a Bollinger band, uh, less than one standard deviation. And I think I have to adjust it again. This should be like 80%, 85% transparency. This should be like half a standard deviation. All right, so what I'm trying to say is look at this chart and look at what the market is doing. I think this was one of the trades I saw. Yes, that's correct. So we have a fairly strong spike here going to the moving average. But look at the moving average. So we have a strong transition below, no touch, no touch, touch. So bar 25 is the first time price is touching moving average after this much sell-off. I understand that this is three legs down, but this is too strong. Like how much buying pressure do you have here? One meager bull bar here, and this is an inside bar. Doesn't add to the bull equation all that much. We have another one here and another one here. So this will have probably some sort of a second leg because of its strength, but it is also the first test of the moving average. That is the context. The other thing is that if you're looking for second legs, you have to imagine this gray area around the moving average. This is like, you know, a military zone. You, you shouldn't be doing counter trend trading in that area. Okay, if you buy here below these lows, looking for a second leg up, that's very dangerous. This gray area is where the market usually comes to to find support and resistance, in this case, resistance. So looking for, looking for second legs inside of this area around the moving average, when your counter trend is dangerous. So please don't do it. It's one of those examples that I just said that when you teach a trading rule to a student and then you see that they generalize it and apply it in every circumstance, that is wrong. You have to always pay attention to what is going on on the left-hand side of the chart and then uh, synchronize your actions and thinking with the context of the market primarily. And then in the second spot with the immediate thing in hand. So this is going to have a second leg of some sort, but that some sort might be just one bar, which is what it was here. So buyers below these bars, they scalped. Actually, this was the trade, this bar, 25. So five points, five points scalp. But the bears are going to, to start to short the first test of the moving average. You have to imagine this fluffy area around the moving average as still the moving average. So this moving average is not this line alone. It has a, an electrical field around it. And that is this electrical field. And as you see, it's a good strategy to start to go in the direction of the trend when the market comes into this area for the first time, first or second times. This was the very first time. But this is different. This is a bear spike. Usually market goes four or five bars sideways below the moving average and then starts to either fail or resume, but mostly resume. Again here, so bulls got trapped in this area. Therefore, this makes it resistance for the future. We are not there yet, but I think this is going to be resistance later on. Sometimes overnight, it sets up a trade. Same with this one. So looking for second legs is a very good style of trading, but um, there is a caveat to it, and that is paying attention to also the context, not just the first leg. The other thing is that when the first leg is counter trend, the second leg can just be one bar, so it doesn't get symmetrical. This is this is the case in especially strong environments, and this is a strong environment because price is below both moving averages. This is the 60 minute, this is the five minute, and you have still very strong trending markets. So looking for a second leg up in this area is dangerous inside of this electrical field. Uh, let's just quickly look at some other examples now that we have it on the chart. So the only time that you are really allowed to do it 
is when the market is in a complete trading range. If the day is a trading range day, you can do it. It's okay. But if the day is showing trending tendencies, like these big open gaps, then it's better to be conservative. This type of a day, trading range day, this is more in tune with second leg trading. And then you might be able to get, get away with buying in this electrical field area. Even here, it was, you see, it led to a break even trade. So it was not very good. You have to be really, really careful with it. Let's look at another one. This extremely strong bear trend day. So you see, coming back to this area inside the moving average and the gray area, there was reaction to it, reaction to it from here. So when the trend is strong, price gets to this electrical field around the moving average, but doesn't really touch the moving average. When the trend is weaker, it usually goes inside it and sometimes goes to the opposite end and then reverses. This is an example. Let's look at another one. All right, so this is again, that example, this trade should have worked, right? Because at this point, you're looking for a second leg up. This is the trade that I took and it failed. Now this place is resistance and you see everybody did that. So market cannot penetrate beyond it. Another example here. So first bounce from the electrical field around the moving average, not from the moving average. Second one goes through, same with this one, same with this one. I'm not suggesting that you go ahead and put Bollinger Bands on your moving averages, but this is just to illustrate that there is an area of support around the moving average, just to give you a visual of it. All right, so here's another one. Looking for second leg in this area is dangerous. It worked this time, but after this, you might also get a second test. This was a different case because of everything that I talked about. You have nested spike and climaxes, and this was the very first strong pullback in a strong bull environment. So market is reversing, it's above both moving averages, and usually the first break of the trend line fails and market resumes. This was a special case, but then again, there's always a better later trade. Always. There is like show me one that there, there there was none. So let's say you don't you ignore this for the reasons I said. And then you see this bar going up far above the moving average. So you missed buying low, but now you have higher probability. And you also know that this was a reasonable area for the bears to sell inside of this area around the moving average. So bears sold somewhere in here. And they are going to scale in and try to get outbreak even. There is no good short here. Maybe this one is. So they're going to sell that. And this midpoint, this is the break even price. That's the second good trade. This one is also okay. Buying below 48 because it's a bad sell signal bar is probably going to fail. But this is an example of it. So there's always a better later trade when things are not very clear. Wait for them to become clear and then take that second trade, which is very high probability.